Hey everyone, it's Alana here with Enriched Academy. I run the coaching program and I also was one of the founding members of this budget spreadsheet. And uh, we've been having a couple of questions recently as to how to properly fill it out. So I wanna take you guys through um, uh, basically the procedure of after you have downloaded the budget from your online portal, how to go about filling out and then tracking um, your budget after that. So the very first thing that you wanna do um, after you have downloaded your budgeting spreadsheet, uh, save it to your computer somewhere because it's not gonna automatically save and we don't want you to lose all of your uh, work as you go through it. So that would be step number one. Uh, step number two, what you wanna do next is you wanna focus on the current column of this budget. And the way that you're gonna fill out some of the cells on the budget is by taking the last three to six months of your debit and credit statements and trying to get as accurate with the categories as you possibly can. So the first thing that you're gonna do, I'm gonna fill this out here. I'm just gonna do uh, kind of estimates of uh, some of these numbers, but you're gonna go through and fill this out as whatever your monthly income is. So if you make uh, 34.50 a month and your partner, let's say, makes a net income of uh, 17.65, you're going to type in those numbers up here in the monthly income column under the current column because that's what you're currently making and you can see over here that as you fill out the budget spreadsheet the summary uh, area over here is also going to update as you go so you're going to go through the monthly uh, income area and fill in all those cells and then down here what you're going to do is if you're putting any money aside on a monthly basis into any of these savings plans so for example if i put a hundred dollars away into my tax-free savings account and I don't have RRSP contributions being deducted from my paycheck, but I'm putting $150 away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that in this monthly savings area here. Now, what's going to happen over here on the summary is that it's going to show that you actually have less income than what you really have in the monthly income section here. And the reason that we did that is because we want to show clients um, and we wanted to show everybody how much after saving you actually have left to spend. So this $4,965 is the amount of money that you could realistically spend on expenses after you put your savings aside. So once you go through the savings column, you're gonna go through, type in however much money you're putting away into these savings vehicles on a monthly basis. And then you're gonna go through the fixed expenses and do the same. So fixed expenses, these are the expenses, they don't change every single month. So I'm gonna go through, let's say my, uh, my, my rent every month is 1950 and my internet is 3390 and my cell phone, let's say is 80 bucks a month or eight, on average it's 80, 75. Um, I've got you know, my, my Netflix and uh, you know, if you do uh, 13, 99 for Netflix, let's say, and 7.99 for Amazon Prime, and then I've got an app that charges five bucks a month. Well, I'm paying 26.98 a month in there, and you're going to go through each and every one of these fixed expenses and type in how much, on average, you are spending in each of those categories. So you're going to do that one by one. Um, if there are categories that do not pertain to you, don't delete them, but what you can do is you can change. So let's say I don't have a car loan, but I have a loan to a friend. Um, don't delete the row itself, just change the name of the category. You can make this worksheet, whatever works best for you. So you're gonna go through, type in all of your uh, fixed expenses here, and it's gonna auto calculate everything at the bottom just for your fixed expenses, which will then uh, also jump over into the summary tab here, right? That's just your fixed expenses. Then you're gonna go through the variable expenses. So the variable expenses, this is really where you wanna get as detailed as possible with your uh, credit and debit cards because you wanna find averages of what you're spending in each of these different categories. As an example, if I have credit card debt and I, haven't, I don't pay off that credit card debt every single month, I'm gonna have interest that's incurred because I have an outstanding debt. So I'm gonna go through the last three to six months of my credit card statement and see that on average, my interest charges are 45, 35. And let's say for example, I have, and we'll just say this is on my BMO MasterCard, for example. And then let's say I also have a, a PC MasterCard. 
Uh, those interest charges are on average $12.90, so maybe I have a smaller balance. And let's say maybe also I have a, a home equity line of credit or just a personal line of credit. We can type that in here. And let's say my personal line of credit here is $25.67 a month. Uh, type in all of those interest charges here. And then in the notes, what I also like to do is just, I like to sometimes say uh, balance owing, let's say, 4,300 uh, at 6.95%. That's just what I like to do so I know what interest rate that I have and so I can focus on my financial priorities first. So you're gonna go through that. Um, let's say on average groceries, you spend this amount of money and you're dining out. This is typically a big one for people. You're gonna go through everything and you're gonna type in how much money you spend on all of these different things. Now, at the end of your variable expenses, it's gonna calculate also uh, how much you spend on all of your variable expenses. Now, um, if, uh, and all of this is gonna calculate once again up here uh, in your, uh, in the summary tab. So you're gonna go through all your variable expenses and then you're gonna get down to your monthly regular expenses. And this is where you kind of wanna think about, okay, on average every year, how much do I spend in some of these regular expenses, right? Because not everybody goes to the movies every single month or not everybody goes to a concert every single month. So on average, let's say you spend about $1,200 a year in uh, entertainment. What you would do is you take that total amount of money and divide it by 12. And it's going to show you on average every month, how much do you spend in those uh, specific categories? So down here, yes, if you're somebody that, you know, you go crazy at the holiday season time, spend $5,000 a year, well, it ends up being an average about four sixteen sixty seven 67 a month. Down here, vacation, this is a big one for me. So if I go every year and I spend $5,000 on vacation, once again, it's roughly about $416.67 a month. So once you've figured out your regular expenses, you wanna fig figure out on average, what do you spend in those regular expenses monthly? And these, the total monthly regular expenses here should uh, signify how much you should be putting aside every month to prepare for those irregular expenses. So here's an example, property taxes. Typically people pay property taxes once a year. Sometimes they roll it into their mortgage, but under the notes, you could say uh, $1,500 per year due in uh, June 22nd, 2020. So you know June 22nd, 2020, you've got a big bill coming up and you're gonna owe $1,500. Well, to prepare for that bill on June 22nd, what you should be doing is every month, you should be setting aside $125 for your property taxes. So when your that bill comes up, you're not scrambling around the house looking under couch cushions for pennies and nickels so you can pay your property taxes, right? So you wanna always think ahead of the game. So that's what you do basically in the current column of the budget. We wanna know what you are spending right now as of today's given date on your current expenses. And once you have gone through the current column of your budget, if you are in the red or in the negative every month, what it means is that you are overspending. And now what we need to do is we need to make a change, right? So this is where the goal column comes into place. So if you're not happy with what you're spending money on, if you're in the red every single month, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through the goal column again and you're gonna try to balance your budget. So let's say for example, uh, you've got the same job, you've got fixed income, that's not gonna change unless of course you get a raise and then you can come back in here and, and change things around. Um, and anytime that anything drastic happens in your life, let's say uh, maybe you've lost your job, maybe you get a raise at work, maybe you buy a, you know, a new, um, a, a large purchase of some kind, you have to go in and rework your budget. So let's just go through the goal column. We're gonna input you know, what we're making in our income. Um, we've decided for the time being, because we have some high interest debts, we're not gonna put money away into our savings. Um, and we're for the time being, we're gonna stop putting away um, money into our RSPs because we're dealing with some higher interest credit card debt that we wanna focus on. Uh, and then you're just gonna go through this again. And if the numbers remain the same as they were in the current column, you're just gonna retype in that amount of money um, in the goal column because you wanna basically balance your budget, but you don't wanna leave any, um, you don't wanna leave any expenses out. So if for some reason, 
uh, maybe one of your action steps here. If I'm going through my current column and I'm like, wow, you know, my credit card is, or sorry, my cell phone's getting really expensive. Um, I keep seeing every year that they're just kind of creeping up by $5 here, $5 there. Well, maybe one of your action steps to cut back on your cell phone is to, um, you know, call different providers for cell phones. And maybe through those action steps, you were able to uh, get your monthly cell phone bill down to, let's say, 60 bucks a month. So now you know, moving forward, your new bill is going to be 60 bucks a month. Same thing here. Maybe you're, you've decided to cancel all of your other subscriptions except for Netflix. So you're going to only spend $13.99 a month. You're going to do the same thing. I'm keeping my disability insurance. It's the best price I can get. You're going to go through loan to a friend. I had some money sitting in my TFSA. I decided to totally pay off the friend. I don't have to give them $500 anymore. And let's say I get rid of my bank fees. So now all of a sudden, these are expenses you no longer have. Every month, you're only going to be spending $22,0789 moving forward in your fixed expenses. Then you jump over here to the monthly variable expenses with your credit card. Um, and what you, wanna, what you want to do um, is that you want to you want to put more than the interest charges on your credit cards, right? So this 4535 is only the interest charge and, and you want to show it that way so you uh, so you can see what kind of interest you are incurring on your credit card every single month. So you actually want to pay play, sorry, you want to pay more than the interest that you're that you're being charged on your credit card, right? So my goal for example is to put $200 a month on my credit card and this is where you can go to use the debt pressure tool as well and incorporate this and I want to put $100 a month onto my Mastercard and that's what I want to dedicate myself to. And same down here, I want to start to put uh let's say $100 a month onto my personal line of credit because it's I just want to try to pay it off. Um so then you're going to go through and you know maybe you're thinking yeah groceries uh i throw out a lot of food so maybe i can try to stick to a budget of 400 dollars a month and my dining out bill is insane so i'm going to try to cut that half and stick to 400 dollars a month and you're going to go through all of this and give yourself a realistic number that you can stick to moving forward that's what you're going to do in the goal column and it's really just about adjusting what your needs are versus what your wants are so same thing you're going to go through all of this you're going to give yourself a new goal and at the end of it, let's say you are going to, let me just finish filling this out. Um, at the end of all of this, you are going to see, hopefully, after you've done filling everything out, that you have now balanced your budget. And that's the whole, uh, that's the whole uh, point of this is to balance your budget on a, on a monthly basis. And so when you're, ba when you're, budget is balanced, um, what you can do is now you can start to track it, right? And this is where when you go over to the budget tracking tab, all of the goals that you have just input into that column are now sitting on the tracking tab. And so what you're going to do is if you want to replicate this tab for month by month, um, you can do that as of right now, we only have the one tab, but what I typically tell my clients to do is to uh, if you right click on the budget tracking tab you can go move or copy and what it'll do you just select this create a copy let me just move this up here a bit you can create a copy and we want to put that next copy into the action steps so you're going to have a blank copy at all times um, and then let's just say we're tracking for the month of uh let's just say we're going to track for the month of august uh, we're going to call this August tracking. And now what we can do is actually start tracking our spending. So anytime that you have a transaction coming in or you have a uh, a bill or you make income or anything like that, you actually want to go in and you want to track those transactions that you are making. So if I get paid here, let's just say I get the bulk of my pay on day one and my partner gets the bulk of their pay on day one as well. You're going to type in how much money you make on each of these days or the transaction dates. Then down here, you're going to type in same thing. If my my cell phone bill or my internet bill comes in on the third of every month, well, I'm going to track 33.90. So you're going to do that throughout all of those different categories that you spend money on. Uh, same thing down here, grocery shopping. I gave myself a, a I gave myself a budget of $400 a month to spend on groceries, 
and I want to track that I'm going to actually spend on that. So let's say I go to Costco because I can't go to Costco and not spend over $200. And then a couple of days later, I go to, I don't know, no frills. And then I go to, let's say Loblaws and I go to Sobeys one day and I spend this money and I'm going to track all of it and I'm going to keep tracking it. And I'm going to do this on a daily basis. And then by the end of all of it, I am showing that I am over $9.89. So as of right now, I've spent $409.89. And you're going to do that for all of the different categories that you have and where you spend your money. And at the end of the month, you are going to head back up to the summary tab, and it's going to show you how much you've made in income for that month and then what your monthly expenses actually were for that month. And if you have money left over down here, you're comparing it to the goal that you in initially set for yourself. If you have money left over here, you should see that money left over in your checkings, in your checkings account. And that's when you, you have the ability, you can say, okay, you know, I saved a lot more money than what I thought I was going to spend. Um, I'm going to put a big chunk. I've got, you know, the thousand dollars left over this month. I'm going to put $500 of it onto my credit card. I'm going to put the other $500 onto my other credit card. And I'm going to pay a big chunk of that balance. So that's the best way to use the budgeting spreadsheet. Um, you want to make sure that you balance your budget first. And then once your budget has been balanced, then you can start to track it to make sure that you, you stay within the parameters of that, that, um, the, the balanced budget that you've created for yourself. And then what you can do on a month by month basis, as I said, this is the blank copy. You're just going to go in, you're going to right click. You're going to make a new copy so you can uh, track it on a month-by-month -month basis if you'd like to. And that is pretty much it.